Beloved Saints. Uh, happy Tuesday. Because Mondays was a little bit long, I think 14 or 15 minutes, I I just, I want to continue in this Proverbs about love thing. Um, and this one is going to be um, Proverbs 17.9. It's similar to the one I gave yesterday, which would have been, um, you know, about uh, love covereth a multitude of sins or all sins. This one is 17.9. It's he that covereth a transgression seeketh love. But he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. Okay. Here's an example of that. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. For instance, let's say so-and-so, girlfriend A talked about girlfriend B around you. You're three girlfriends hanging out. And girlfriend A said something about girlfriend B that wasn't very nice. Out of love, because you don't want to harm that person, you don't want this person to have been, have taken offense because of what this person said, right? And you don't want the girl who it was said about to have her feelings hurt either. And so you're going to cover that. You're not going to mention it. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. This is a peacemaker, someone that does not, that understands people can be loose at the mouth, so we're, we're not going to do that. And maybe even in private say, you shouldn't say that about our friend like that, you know? Maybe they don't realize it, right? Instead of running to the other person to expose it. Okay. He that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. So you go back and repeat that. Now what's happened? Not only have you separated the two girls, you've now made yourself an enemy in both of their eyes. And let me tell you why. The one girl may convince the other girl, I didn't say that and it didn't mean it that way. She's just trying to get you to hate me. Yeah. And she told me that because she wanted to hurt my feelings. Oh, now you're the bad guy and all three of you aren't friends anymore. But guess what? A, who's talked bad about B, is now best buds and you're outside. Because that's what happens. Same thing with cheating husbands and wives. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. One, they're not going to believe you. And if they do, they're going to make up. And then you're going to be enemy number one. Can't bring her around. She's trying to break us up. We got to learn to stay in our lane. Also, I had a very difficult situation many years ago. And that was a little different. It involved a medical condition. And I kept warning, if you don't tell them, I'm going to tell them because it's something that he can get. And, and it's not right. You're not telling him. And they wouldn't. And I did. And I don't talk to either one of them anymore. I, I had to because it was something that would have, la it, would, it was serious. I don't even feel bad about it. I think back and I go, maybe I wouldn't have said anything. Let them do it. They want to make that decision. You know, but I thought it was the right thing. And I missed him terribly. And I'm the jerk. But I, I really felt it was life or death. But now, if I see somebody cheating or I see them, I don't say nothing. Ain't none of my business. Because I already know they're not going to believe me anyway. Or even if they do, they'll just get in a fight. He'll manipulate her or she'll manipulate him. They'll get back together and then I'm enemy to both of them. They'll think I have terrible motives. But that's the worst case scenario. But he that covereth the transgression seeketh love. But he that repeateth the matter separateth his very friends. So overlook people's flaws to maintain decent friendships. Can we like not love people without, you know, criticizing them? And we just, we acknowledge we're, I, I'm, I'm flawed too. I'm flawed too. But I don't need to go tell Susie about Johnny's flaws. It's not that but I don't focus on their flaws. And I'm so glad most people don't focus on mine because I got plenty of them. So he that covereth the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separates very friends. And by the way, whoever you're repeating stuff to, they're not going to trust you again either. 
I, I'm just sharing life wisdom based on the truth of the Proverbs here. It's true. So in friendships and stuff, overlook it. Overlook it. Unless it's something that's really going to damage their life. You know, if somebody's an alcoholic, you need to sit them down and talk to them and say, look, it's affecting your work. You might be okay now, but at some point, something's going to happen. We need to get a, you know, get some help with this. That's different. But flaws or something to do with it, uh, something, somebody ran their mouth, just stay, don't do that. Don't repeat it. Don't, after a while, if somebody continues to say negative things, I excuse myself because I don't want to be complicit in the slander. I'll just leave. And I'm not, I'm not going to condemn the person. I'll ask nicely, can we please not talk about other people that aren't here? Because I don't feel comfortable. If they insist, then I go, okay, I got to go. I can't be here. I, I've learned my lesson. To be even hearing it is not good. So, just want to say, love does not need to criticize all the time. And I know you guys, some of you have mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or husbands or wives, even kids, always telling you what you do wrong. You're messy. You don't do this. And they don't do, they don't bring up the wonderful things. Every time you're sick, you, that person takes care of you. When you're down, you can always count on that person to make you laugh, do something silly at their own expense. How about we just focus on the good things? And unless it's damaging, leave them alone. I just I just think love is, it acts like love. Let's just say that. I know I hear all this, well, love doesn't let you believe a lie. And love tells you the truth. Yeah, we know that's not really why you're saying it. <laughs> let's get, let's get real. We know we know why. And I hear the same thing when the street preachers go to these um, uh, gay pride raids. Now, sometimes their mouths are worse. And I can't believe they're claiming to be preachers. But also, we know you're not there because you love them. You're there. One, so you get kicked out and look like you're persecuted for the cause of Christ. God forgive me. I'm calling it like I see it. Forgive me. Some go with genuine motivation to get them saved. I believe that. I do. And that's a different story. I'm not seeing every person that does it. I'm talking about the ones that make a spectacle out of themselves and say are nasty to them. And all they want to do is condemn them. We already know they're sinners. They know it. Give them the good news. Let God begin a work in their heart. They've been condemned their whole lives. Why do you think they're doing pride parades? Because they're sick of being told that uh, they're hated by God. And God doesn't hate them. We came to him just like we are. I didn't, I didn't change a thing. Except what I trusted in. And he started working in me. Let's just let them hear the good news so God can begin to work in them. But some of these people are not going there because they love them. They're going there, one, because then they can say, well, I tried to tell them, blood's not on my hands. Two, so they can say they were persecuted and they're the real deal Christians. Come on, let's just get real. Let's get real with one another. They want to get arrested. They're being persecuted for the cause of Christ. That's why they go to transgender uh, reading hour. I'm sorry if I've been in people. But I, I got to get real. Not everyone's like that. I don't believe everyone's like that. I've seen some preachers that are there with the genuine gospel. And they're genuinely loving people. And for that, God bless you. But you know the ones I'm talking about. You see them, they're recording it all. And then claiming that they're... Because they say, why are you here? Why are you saying this? We know. We're going to hell. We're sick of hearing it. Right? You know? 
They'll put the repent or perish signs up. Amen. They need to repent. They need to stop thinking they're getting to heaven because of how good they are and trust in Jesus. But that's not the repent they mean. Even if they do repent, even if they do magically stop doing what they're doing, they're still lost because that's not how you're saved. So it's just, it's a waste of time for everybody when they do that. It's just not loving. It's not how love acts. You cannot, you cannot hate and then claim it's love. I told you guys that one statement I heard at that, at that pride parade broke me to my core. Oh yeah, there's nothing as hateful as a Christian's love. It was true. That's what happens when people are cruel and claim it's loving people. Y'all see through it? Come on now. Y'all see through it. I'm not condoning. I'm not condoning anything. I'm also not going to condone being nasty to people. I don't care what their issue is. It's not right. And you know it. And just because I'm saying let's be more effective in evangelism. And to preach the good news correctly. Does not mean I'm condoning anything anyone does. At all. But, you know, don't put the cart before the horse. You're trying to clean up somebody that is lost. They got to be saved first. God will clean them up. Remember the old thing? We are uh, uh, fisher of men. We catch them. He cleans them. So, anyway, I'm going to uh, do another one on love for Wednesday. But uh, it's fascinating. I'm trying to trying to show you guys some personal things I've seen in my own life um, to share with you. And I'm sorry if I say things that are harsh and hurt you. I'm, I'm never trying to do that. And I'm not accusing you personally. <laughs> I'm just talking about people I've seen. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm never talking to you directly like you did something wrong. All right. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you.